on Bike Fam. We've got DA State Championships here. Uh, Cat 3, 4 out here in Easton, PA. Um, and we are, uh, we're at the front of the race. Um, very fortunate we had a grid start and I am very close to the front because that is the front. I have made the front. That is the front of the race. This is very different than last week, isn't it? This is only a 30 minute race, so let's run through it quick. Our course and conditions today, we've got a five corner, I guess corner, one's bending a little bit, crit, and about 100 of our own best friends from across the country and mostly PA, New York, that kind of area. So um, with that many people, I'm on the front trying to make this as hard as I possibly can to make this a race of attrition. And Kelly Benefits is making the exact same thing happen here. We've already talked about tactics a little bit, but you're gonna watch right here on the right-hand side. Kelly is going to send it down this technical stretch here. They know they can string it out because no one's gonna to wanna to go five wide at the speed that we're going, and he gets separation. This back stretch here is super technical. Someone shoots my inside. I don't like that very much, and I get a little bit nervous. Now let's do the counting game here. One, two, three, four. Okay, we got five Kelly Benefits kids here ripping around this wild left-hander here. And all of a sudden I get to thinking here, wait a minute, if they're all, oh no, they're gonna send someone up the road. Okay, I turn my brain on and away I go. And there he is. Gotta put in a good dig to get some separation. And away we go. The way I think about this is, if I can get up the road with this kid, Kelly and my teammates are gonna block. So, who's back there blocking for me? Back there blocking for me, I've got Tom, Sam, Phil, Chris, and Brian all working together for me. So, let's go. I've got ahead a couple laps here because the race has started to settle down a little bit, but we, we are still with the front pack. Um, and right about here is where the finish line was uh, in previous years. And they've shifted it up to the top of this kicker here. And to accommodate for the USAC officials, it comes to a little bit more of a pinch point than it did in the past. And everybody kind of comes together. And I'm about to start talking with friends of the channel, John, and bang, someone goes down from a touch of wheels. Uh, I quickly yelled, watch out, and it could have been hairy if we were both looking over at each other and going down like that. But for the most part, this is a pretty safe course and a pretty safe group of guys. So um, unfortunately, there were a handful of crashes. And usually the more technical areas of crits is where you're gonna find those things happening. So, uh, ooh, a little bunny hop there from Kelly. Um, this this crazy left-hander, I don't know why, it's always in my head and freaks me out. But you can see, yeah, and just yell. A couple guys took it too hot, found the barrier, and everybody's on the gas again. Yeah, 31 miles an hour and then the back stretch here. And you can see we're the, the leading guys now are keeping a single file. Gaps are starting to open up. They've already made that turn. So uh, rather than sitting back here and watching my race ride away from me, I know the move is up the road. And we have to hit this pretty hard and be sustainable up this climb. There's Kyle. Man, the body language, we're all just suffering, buddy. Don't worry. I know that if I'm up here with one of the Kelly Benefits kids, I can't be too far off from the front of this race because I know exactly what they're trying to do. They've been doing it all year to me in 2024, so uh, it's good to go back and see some of this stuff. And now that we've made it back to this technical section, we go from, what, 31 down to 24, 25 and still swinging around this corner. Cutting ahead to a crucial point in the race. You're gonna see two riders going up the road and I see Brian there on the front and I'm about to hit it and I realize, oh, that's one of my teammates up there. Chris has made the break and he's up there with someone from Kelly. This is exactly what we wanted to happen. So we were going through here about 25 miles an hour slowed it down to about 21, 22. Just keep it uh, a, a nice false tempo on the front here. Get to the corners first, don't let anybody dive bomb, keep everything safe, and try to let Chris get up the road. And 
You see peeking in the corner here, Kelly Benefits is thinking the exact same thing. So effectively now we have six times two is 12. So 12 versus 100. Let's see what happens. We're starting to watch some people kind of infiltrate the front of this race now. But still, we've been cruising through this at a, a relatively easy tempo. And you're going to watch that uh, Thor lab here on the left wants to go for a ride. And then another Thor lab. Kelly kind of looks at it, marks it, looks like he's going to start going for it. And then eventually I'm just like, hmm, that's probably two, three bike lengths. I guess I'll just go shut this down. Quick little surge, get back to their wheel, let them know they're not getting away. And uh, let's see if anybody tries to go for this next. You can see the gap they've had in just one lap, so they are definitely moving up there in the break. Coming around, wrapping up lap 15, you can see that they are totally off the finishing stretch. Can't even see him. Gone. Chris is doing his job up there with one of the Kelly riders, and they are just hitting it. And all of a sudden, I start hearing something behind me, and I realize that Bill's about to start chasing our own teammate, so I start yelling. X's last name, don't chase X. So, he's sitting down false tempo, and you can hear on the inside. Just because you announce yourself there doesn't mean that I don't have the right of way. Uh, my bars were in front of this rider, and that was almost a calamity right there. But again, we're keeping it under that 25 miles an hour we're doing before here, through here. So Chris is still keeping a pretty good gap going, and Phil's doing a great job setting a false tempo through here. We've got about five laps to go, and I'm looking up ahead, and I'm not seeing the colors I want at the front of this race. And I see Phil's right here, and I see a couple Kelly benefits, but I see that it looks like there's somebody trying to really drive it on the front here. So I'm going to try to come from the front and set that false tempo again. Remember, we were doing about 31 back here, and I'm going to try to keep this a little bit more tame. But I know at this point, people are going to start getting desperate, and they're just going to start throwing some haymakers, and Mr. Pinarello is about to grave it a rip right here. I'm really fortunate that he opened up his attack right in front of me. Uh, otherwise, I, um, I don't know if I would have been able to stick onto this for that long of an effort. It's a pretty good attack. I, I really thought that um, this, this this one hurt. Um, I, w I was working to make sure I stayed with him, but I couldn't let this guy go away. Yeah, we're going to come back to this technical section a little bit faster than we had in the past, but I, I don't think it's a big risk of the break yet. All right, so we've survived that attack. We've made it through the technical section safe. I'm trying to set you up here on the front and set that false tempo again. And then Right on the right-hand side, are you guys see it? Another haymaker goes, and Kelly's on it. It's gonna be rinse and repeat between me and this kid for the next little bit. Our friend with the Pinarello had a good idea of trying to uh, send it and get away on the finishing stretch here because it does have that uphill kicker finish. Um, so it does require some more watts and it, just like that, you're going to see another rider is going to go here on the left. Oh, and this one was a dig. I really, that hurt. <laughs> um, I can't let this go away, right? Because uh, that, that'll be third spot if, if that makes it. And Kelly's nowhere to be seen on this one because he just covered the last attack. So uh, it's on me to shut this down and bring it all back together. And he kind of eases off into this corner. And the technical nature of this back half just kind of slows him up enough. And so, like, Patrolling on the front here, uh, my job's done. With uh, two laps to go. Yeah, I neglected to share the data so far. So um, while we kind of neutralize here, another two hot dog uh, foray for John and uh, 345 uh, normalized. Letting that guy know I've got a teammate up there. I'm not going anywhere. Looks like a cat three performance here. Uh, topping out at uh, 1130 it looks like 1129 for for a sprint that must have been for chasing pinarello man um and yeah this i'm happy to, to sit in here and start doing given this pace but um ultimately i think you guys want to know how we ended up so i'm going to bring you our sprint finish here chris gets second in the state and here comes phil 
He gets fourth on a day, but third in the state. So any day that you get uh, two of your homies on the podium in a, uh, a state championship, that's a red letter day. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to, uh, to be the workhorse on this one. They've worked for me before, so uh, I'm super stoked. And to finish up here right next to John, my old racing buddy, it just seems fitting. Ton of fun. Um, just gotta watch out for this last rider that's going backwards here and we'll be all right. But uh, guys, we'll be at Easton again. Please say hi and um, like, subscribe. And if you want me to change something up, comment. All right, Sizzly out.